let's go ahead and start this off with the uh, this video. I uh, took a clip from it from the AVI guy. Now, he's the only one I could find this clip under, believe it or not, any longer. It is the uh, the MCM referencing saying that they were going to do detentioning before the bridge was going to open. So let's play the clip and then I'll tie into my rest of my comments. Ready to dismantle and remove the SPMTs from underneath the bridge back into the staging area. Right after that, we will continue with the demobilization of all the rope leads and detensioning of the two bars on top of the bridge. And right after that, we will be reopening 8th Street to the public. Reopening 8th Street to the public. Let's jump over to here. Now, I am off. That's a question right here that asked me a question about the... Uh, Jack Henry, he brought up an excellent question, uh, this right you. here. The excellent question he brought up was um, that the that they said that they were going to detention. And if they detention, and we're referring to these same members, why did they have the jackhammer out again? Well, that would imply that something else moved, that they had a jackhammer again, or they never jackhammered, used a jackhammer the first time, which means it would be different members that they would have accessed um, because these members appear to need or require jackhammering. And when I say these members, I think it's on both ends of the bridges, bridge structure that they needed the jackhammer. Looking at the rubble um, from the number 2-3 uh, node or 2-3 blister, then again, when the bridge fell, it could have had rubble down in the bottom of 2 and 3. It had bounced out. But if you look at images, you'll see some debris on top of the bridge there. Of two and three, some rubble. On top, very small bits of rubble. Now, we come back to this. What could you do to, uh, to could detensioning cause failure in the structure? So I think it could. I think detensioning could cause failure in the structure if you work at it from this way. Imagine that uh, the cracks have happened, but they happened uh, during or after you've already have post-tensioning on here. So they won't show themselves. They're going to keep themselves together. You've got a glass bottle, imagine, with a, a, a string all the way through it. You've got a crack around the glass bottle, um, but the string is pulled taut on each end, uh, the bottom and the, and the opening end, if you will, and it's real tight. It's holding it together. Now, if I was to take the string and release the string, I've got two halves again. It's going to break apart. I always had two halves, but the uh, string, in this case, post-tensioning, held it together. So let's say that this crack um, was not fully through or mostly through or however you want to say it, but this, this video is about how you can show detensioning could have caused um, failure in the structure when typically this was designed to be under compression um, typically, this appears to be designed under compression in this uh, in the truss layout. That number eleven would be always under compression, not always when they're transporting. It appears to be under tension, um, but at the, when it's in place, it appears that the design is to the design intent is to put this under compression, and the loads transferring down this column here, this pier. So with that said, if uh, it loads were okay, let's remember this is a hypothetical. So the loads were okay. They decided they're not going to detention that day, as that guy said, because I couldn't find a single photograph of anyone posting showing that the members were on top, workers were on top of the bridge, detentioning uh, the structure in any format, whether it be down here, whether it be in the uh, number two or number eleven. Just I can't find anything. All right, so coming to this, so they were detensioning. If they were detensioning, that would be like that bottle. You would release the uh, the uh, the tension that was keeping this number eleven together, or possibly the canopy had a crack in it and it was keeping it together, the in inside of the canopy, etc. And once you started detensioning, you released the uh, the bottle. Right, think of the bottle thing. You released it. Now this showed itself, presented itself right there in a crack. Because I like this idea, because under compression typically, you would, you, you would want to see something buckle near the middle. So my failure under compression would be here, um, near the top, because of all the chaos mathematics coming across everything. I still, I still like that, but this video is about could detention and cause the failure. 
it would have been not the cause of it, it would have been part of the mechanism because the crack was present. Ultimately, that's what's going on here. There, there's, there's something already present when they started post-tensioning because I don't see their post-tensioning, uh, 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 structural integrity was already lacking when they started post-tensioning, I think, and that is the voids, etc. Back to this, we see this duct, and this duct is t fully collapsed. Um, could this be from number 11? Well, it's going down um, uh, longitudinally along this. So if it broke, you're telling anyone to theorize this broke. What did it do? Pop up inside here and create a uh, pull itself out without destroying itself here as it's being pulled because this is compressed. I saw a couple of comments that I decided not to uh, dive into besides now. It just doesn't know. This is going to be the empty void, I think, the misplacement. As we saw in the other video I showed, there's an, uh, a sistering one of this on the opposite side. Again, which take no, is noteworthy is that this is a cold joint. There's nothing connecting here. This looks like a smooth surface, apparently. Um, one of my arrows show this going here uh, in the, in the uh, screenshot in my thumbnail. I had two thumbnails. I loaded the wrong one. It was supposed to show the arrow coming to here. And I did two arrows, in fact, a, a green one and a blue one, showing, okay, this might be the electrical, and this might be electrical, and this might be the other rest of this duck. So there you have it. That's the uh, detensioning, potentially a cause of failure, uh, a mechanism, uh, one of the series of things that took place that could cause failure if, it was, uh, if, if we're going to look at detensioning being a... Uh, a uh, possible cause of the failure. So we'd have to assume that the guy, the MCM, MCM guy that stated on that other video that they were detensioning before they opened the structure, we'd have to assume that they never did it. And I'm not saying they did or did not. I'm saying that we don't have any photographs of it. And let's say they did it now. Um, then you would think, ah, no big deal. We're just taking the tension off because that would then imply that, well, why would you put tension on? Well, it would imply that, like a lot of people theorize, that they use tensioning to uh, for the overhang, the cantilevers, to keep it stable while they're moving it. Mm. In that case, um, could the break even have happened during transportation? Sure could. If you're relying on that, that means you're creating a load point at that post-tension um, location, which we know to uh, just be two bar, uh, caps, 8 by 12, and as a bridge, if it was a flex or bounce, those loads would be pretty point-loaded up there in the canopy, coming back to the canopy. And again, we have this crack here. So we've got quite a few possibilities and mechanisms of failure, least of which I think is down here. Um, wish you guys the best. And thanks for watching, and I hope, uh, well, I gotta get to work. Bye.